The Ukrainian flag is flying once again in the southern city of Kherson after Russia said it had completed its military withdrawal. So what is the next stage in this war? Let's bring in our defence and security analyst, Professor Michael Clark. Uh, Professor, before we get to the next stage, I just want to get your reaction to what we're seeing happening in Kherson today. Yeah, a very dramatic day. Um, Russian forces have been moving out for about a week, not just in Kherson itself, but further up the river as well, at uh, Berislavska, uh, that we've marked there, and around Novokokovka, which is a really important area, really important uh, place mark on the map. So they've been withdrawing, and it looks as if they've got a lot of the heavy equipment out of the way. But the collapse today, what looks like a collapse of the forces they left in Kherson, is fairly dramatic and very humiliating for the Russians. The Ukrainians, I think, will be careful. They have said that they expect there to be lots of mines and booby traps and maybe special forces, the Spetsnats, left behind in order to exact a price for this. So I think they might be cautious. But it's a big day, undoubtedly a big day. This is the only significant city the Russians took in February, and now they've lost it. And they annexed it, didn't they? It was uh, six weeks ago. They annexed it and they said, President Putin said it will, be, it will be forever Russia. Forever Russia. Forever Russia. Didn't um, last very long. Indeed, no, but oh, are we sure that the Russians are actually withdrawing? Yes. Uh, 48 hours ago, we wondered uh, if, if they were playing a different tactical game. But yes, they, they are withdrawing. And it, I mean, there may still be some fighting in Kherson. I suspect there might be some rough justice on the streets, people who are regarded as collaborators, maybe some Spetsnaz forces in civilian clothes. Left behind. And it's tough, isn't it? Urban warfare. Absolutely, absolutely. And we know that the Russians sent some um, film crews into Hurson a few days ago, apparently to film whatever was going to happen. I think they'd like to pin the blame for any fighting that goes on on Ukrainians, as it were, invading the, the, the Russians who really want to be in Hurson. That's the, the sort of narrative they'll create. So it, it's very difficult. The problem that the Ukrainians are, are going to have is that the Russians will be the other side of the river. Um, and they'll still be able to bombard Kherson uh, in the way they bombarded Mariupol and Sverodonetsk. And what they tried to do in Kharkiv, you know, they, they tried to take Kharkiv, which is the second city up in the northeast. They failed, so then they stood away from it and bombarded it. And the Ukrainians had to work very hard to push them far enough away out of artillery range. So the Ukrainians will have to try to push them another 30 kilometres or so east. That won't be easy. And I suspect that they'll have to do that somehow from the north. So I think there's another quite big battle developing, which will probably start, I've always said this, mm -hmm. in Novokokovka. I think the Ukrainians, if they can, if they can, might try to cross the river and then put pressure on the Russians from the north so the Russians have to withdraw a bit further. If they leave them uh, on the east bank of the river, then almost for sure the Russians will just bombard Kherson with their artillery. Kachovka is where the dam is. Yeah, and the hydroelectric power and the canal, the, the Crimea Canal runs from there, which supplies water to Crimea. But the Russians, uh, the Ukrainians have said the Russians are preparing, they've mined the dam and they might blow it up. If they that blow it up... That would be dire, wouldn't it? It would. It, well, it would, it would flood the valley. It would flood more on, the, uh, on the, the eastern side than the west. That's just how the land lies. It would take about uh, between 19 and 20 hours for the water from the dam to reach the Black Sea. So it would be an ecological catastrophe. But, of course, it would flood more the areas that the Russians are now digging in on. So it, it wouldn't make a lot of sense from that point of view. But, you know, who knows what makes sense in the Kremlin these days? Um, they're in a very peculiar mindset uh, as this process goes on. Just finally, let's take a step back. Every war ends in negotiation, doesn't it? We've had a top US general saying... The retreat from Kherson means there's a window of opportunity now mm. for some sort of peace talk, some sort of negotiation. I mean, how realistic do you think that is? Yeah. Is that going to happen? Sergei Lavrov? Yeah, yeah don't hold uh, your breath. Um, and this is all about the G20 summit next week in Bali. And President Putin said he won't go because the last time he went to a summit was the Shanghai Cooperation Organization meeting in September. And he was humiliated amongst people who actually quite like him. And he, he came away from that really angry and humiliated. Why? Why? What happened? Well, because he, he's lacking power. He's losing the war. And so they took their chance to make him wait for them, to leave him on the stage by himself, to embarrass him. Even, you know, the, the presidents of, of smaller countries, let alone the, the Turkish president and the, uh, the Prime Minister of India. And Xi Jinping of China, mm. of course, you know, made it pretty clear he doesn't really approve of the way the war is going. So he's certainly not going to go to Bali and be even more humiliated. So he sent Lavrov to be humiliated. Now, the, the point about what, what may happen at Bali next week is talks about talks. 
but I'm certain they won't be about a, a negotiated end to the war. They might turn into talks about talks between the militaries for maybe a ceasefire in place. That's okay. the best you can hope for. Okay. Well, we'll see you next week. Bali. Um, Professor Michael Clark, thank yeah. you, as always. So interesting.